Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. the video wrong I <laughs> oh well it doesn't matter uh, usually when the theme's playing I'm supposed to have uh, this on okay and uh, uh, instead uh, I had uh, let me see here the, this on yeah so then when I went to the to uh, uh, go to my my thing I put on the ramble thing eh, well it doesn't matter doesn't matter doesn't matter Anyway, I'm feeling lazy tonight, so what I, and I don't have an interview that I've done uh, recently. So what I figured I would do is uh, go back to an old interview we did a long time ago that's kind of worth playing again, and I think you'll enjoy with an old friend of ours. Yeah, he's a magician. So when I asked this gentleman, is he ready, you said... I've been preparing for this my whole life. Yeah, he's been preparing. As, as a young boy growing up in Greenfield, Massachusetts, I said, I just have to work so that by 2017, <laughs> I can talk to Alex Bennett on Skype. Yeah, that's exactly it. We never thought we would ever, back then, we didn't know we'd be doing something like this, right? When we first met? No. Actually, no, I thought I'd be living on the moon with a model with and a you know flying car and a family and a dog. Yeah. But that's that's not the case. We're a little no. we're a little out of sync today. But I find that Skype does that. I have no reason why that happens. It's the gods of Skype. But you look fine and you look good. This is, ladies and gentlemen. Do I have to? People know what you look like. They, you you are one of the most recognizable people in America. Well, Pen there you go. There you go. So should I say Pendulette? Sure, you can say Pendulette. Yeah. I'm not first to my name. Yeah. What is that? Uh, Big poster in back of you. Uh, Bob Dylan, Ronaldo and Clara. Mm -hmm. That's what that is. It's a French poster for Ronaldo and Clara. It's gigantic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of lot of Bob Dylan in my office here. Wasn't wasn't that the movie that he actually directed? Yeah, it's like four hours long, and eight different people play Bob Dylan, and it's very odd. Yes, he goes to Stations of the Cross with Allen Ginsberg. And, just the kind of stuff I like. Yeah. So, Pretentious and obtuse. So how many years is this now with uh, with Teller? It's got uh, 40, 43, I guess. Yeah, yeah. 43, and that's 43 continuous. Wow. You know, you can, you can try to say uh, Keith Richards and Mick Jagger go longer, but they take three, four, five years off. You know, <laughs> even when they're together, they take the time off. You can say, you know, you can try to say other teams, but continuous, you know, no more than um, two weeks working apart, I think. I think it was one time Teller went to Italy for two weeks for vacation. But other than that, it's been 43 years solid, constant. Wow. Wow. And like being waterboarded for 43 years. Has uh, during, during that time, and I want to just tell the audience, if he looks a little out of sync, that's because he is. Um, we've been having problems lately with uh, long-distance calls for some reason on Skype being out of sync. So just cover your mouth whenever you talk, and then they won't know it's out of sync. Anyway, in, in all that time, have you ever, the two of you, gotten into a situation where you said, that's it, I don't want to work with you any longer? We have a disagreement on the memory of this. <clears throat> I think maybe in 1976 or 77, that is to say one year, or two years in, uh, I think there was a Dudley Riggs Brave New Workshop in Minnesota. Yeah. I think one of us may have said that's it for five seconds. But other than that, there hasn't even been a hollow threat. Wow. Wow. 
Okay, because I, I'd heard that at one point you, 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 you had a big disagreement. I think when you were doing the Penn, Penn and Teller movie, what was that movie called? Penn and Teller Get Killed. Get Get killed. killed. That, uh, that you did have a massive argument, but somehow the director, Arthur Penn, uh, kind of oh, got I, the two of you together and said, stop it. I never said we didn't have arguments. Yeah. Question was, did you ever say, you know, we're thinking about calling this quits. Those are very, two very, very different things, yeah. you know. Um, and our disagreements are um, almost always artistic and not personal. Yeah. And that's, that's a very important distinction. I mean, Lennon and McCartney, uh, Gilbert and Sullivan, Martin and Lewis, they were in love. You know, they were people that it was an emotional bond. Taylor and I, our <clears throat> relationship with one another personally is very, very cool. It's, um, it's very uh, like two guys running a 7-Eleven together. It's very businesslike. And then artistically is where we try to keep all the energy and all the spark. And the truth is we actually enjoy rather aggressive arguments about art. But that would lead to splitting up, if you know what I mean. Some, somebody once asked me, like with the people I work with, like I had a, you know, a newswoman, Lori Thompson, you remember Lori, and, and they would say, do you ever get together when you're not on the show? And I said, hardly ever, because we see each other every day. Yeah, so and, the and, question is, what did you do today? Same thing you did. That's what I did. Same as you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's not much to talk about. Yeah, uh, but you know, I got to tell you, I was uh, I, I every week I watch your TV show. Well, thank you. Because I think that finally you found the one vehicle that's perfect for you guys on television as a weekly well, show. Thank you. Yeah, we uh, we we really like doing it. You know, it's yeah. uh, it's funny after uh, being thrown out of the Magic Castle and the Magic Circle and uh, building our career. Are being hated uh, by magicians. We are now the uh, the uh, you know the the old time magicians who are, are bringing on younger magicians. I kind of <laughs> love that. It's kind of the way the world is supposed to go. Are you now accepted by those groups like the Magic Castle and so on? Hundred percent. Yeah. 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 But that's not true. The Magic Circle still won't let us in. We're the Magic Castle. We're the Americans. We're fine. The Brits still haven't come around. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, and you don't mind that, do you? I mean, you no. kind of lived for that in a way. Oh, sure. It's, it's, it's this really weird thing. The Magic Circle is uh, this exclusive magic club in London. And uh, they are real sticklers about secrets. So although they have honored us, and they have honored us, and although they have a museum, which they have artifacts from Penn and Teller in, and although we are welcome there, and they all ask for our autographs, we are not members. Because at some time in the past, we away a secret the cabal kind of stated we would never be members <laughs> and they're so embarrassed every time uh i say we're not allowed in the magic circle the president writes to me and says no don't don't say you're not allowed it really embarrasses us and i go but we're not he goes i know you're not but we love you <laughs> oh boy well uh but the magic castle now welcomes you with open oh, yeah. arms right Absolutely. yeah in fact, I was watching this week's show, and the daughter or the granddaughter of the person Liberty. who created the Magic Castle is now a magician. Liberty Larson, and she's wonderful. And if she weren't, it would be it would it would be a crime, because uh, not only she, but her mother and her grandmother spent their whole lives in magic. So it's wonderful to see to see Liberty doing that. Well, when I grew up and I was a kid, and that was a long time ago, a lot longer than when you were a kid, uh, I used to love magic, and my parents would take me to magic shows. So I saw them all. I saw uh, Harry Blackstone was my favorite at the time, but sure. I saw Thurston and uh, several others during that period of time, and I loved magic. And then when you guys finally came along, I guess I had kind of grown out of magic. And I went, you, you invited me to come see your show, and I had never seen him. 
And I went and saw it, and I said, these guys have reinvented magic. You know, this is not your, your grandfather's magic show. And, and you've been doing that for the last 44 years and pretty well maintaining that edge. You know, uh, I think if you try to reinvent yourself and you try to reinvent anything and you try to uh, be edgy, I think you just fail or eventually you fail. You know, we've always been trying to do stuff that, that we like. And, uh, and we've, uh, we are, I think, really unusual. And then if you talk to, if you were able to talk to Houdini or Paul McCartney mm -hmm. or Elvis yeah. and, or Madonna and ask them, you know, how famous are you? They would say, not really as famous as we should have been. We didn't really, the audience didn't really accept us. We should have been more famous. That's the kind of ambition you have. Taylor and I, uh, are more famous than we should be. You know, we expected to be playing for two or 300 people and we're off by like an order of magnitude. It's two or 3,000 and we're still kind of amazed at it. So uh, we just do stuff that we think is good. The one change is over the past uh, five or six years, uh, our writing has changed in that um, we only like to do hard stuff now. You know, one of us will come and say, I got this idea Boom, boom, just like that. We can do this easy. It'll be really funny. The audience will love it. And the other one goes, nah, nah. And then someone comes and goes, I get this idea. I don't think it'll work. I'm not sure we can do it. And I don't know if anybody will like it. The other one goes, I'm in. <laughs> it's just, you know, we have enough material now. You know, we've got six to seven hours of live material. We have enough material uh, to last us well beyond when we're dead. We don't have any economic pressure to change material, nothing. So we're really just doing our career as a hobby now. So we change the show all the time. We're always writing new stuff. We're more prolific now than we were when we were 25. And uh, we're, having a, we're having a blast. What, what we're you, doing what really you, hard stuff. What, what you're saying is that fame, success, and so on has given you an ability a lot of people don't take advantage of, and that is to try any shit you want to. Yeah, it's amazing to me the number of people that work so hard in show business essentially to get out of it. Um, they play golf all day. You know, they uh, spend as little time as possible on what they're doing. And I've never understood that. You know, if you told me at uh, when I was 16 years old, 17 years old, you'll have a chance to be working with... Um, the greatest mind in magic, mm -hmm. uh, in a theater with your name on it, with 1,500 people coming to see you every night, with a, to a 16 year old, unlimited budget, and 15 people around you to work with you and make it happen, who are all talented and skilled, uh, I would have said, yes, I'll do that the rest of my life. And indeed, I am saying, yes, I'll do that the rest of my life. I intend to die in office. You won't see me. Uh, playing golf or saying, you know, enough of that magic thing. You know how um, uh, Johnny Carson retired when he was at the top of his game? Right. And Sinatra, although I never say this to his face, went beyond when he was at the top. Oh, he, it, was ter it was terrible what happened. Maybe he, failed a little bit. He went back. He went back when he shouldn't have gone back. I intend to do that. <laughs> I intend, I intend, when you see me, my last show, uh, I certainly hope I completely suck and it's embarrassing because I do want to keep doing this. This is what I want to do. So, yeah, you know, I knew Johnny and Johnny, um, you know, decided to do that retirement thing. And I guess it was OK for him. But I much prefer the Sinatra. Keep going while you suck. Really? Because I have some recordings of Sinatra like in Milan during the t last days of his life where he just couldn't even sing. And I love Sinatra so much, I can't listen to that shit. Wow. <laughs> just keep going till you, you, till you, you, the people go, this is the worst show I've ever seen in my life. Until no one shows up <laughs> or you're dead. Those are your two choices. That's my living will says, when I'm in a coma, put me on stage. 
<laughs> well, apparently, apparently, I'm doing the same thing in that uh, now with this little thing with the internet, where all broadcasters go when they no longer have a career. Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, uh, I'm doing this every night, and I don't think I'm anywhere as good as I used to be. And uh, I think I suck, and I keep doing it, so I guess I'm lying when I say I won't keep doing it. It's what you do. It's what you do. It's why, it's, you know, it's all you know how to do. You know, when they, uh, when they would have a trained pig act in the circus, you know, and they would, the pigs would get too big, and they would take them out and, and put them in a farm, when the circus would come nearby and the pigs would hear the music, they would still do the act. <laughs> in, one of, in, one of the, you know, in one of the really pitiful, uh, disgusting, horrible views of life. Uh, if you look at that cynically, that's horrible and sad and miserable and terrible. But to me, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, I hope you keep going like the pigs, you know. I will. Uh, <laughs> It's, uh, I mean, uh, you you guys have, have managed to keep your skill set going, and that's what's so amazing, you know, and I think it's because you love what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. it's just it's just what we do, you know, it's just, uh, you know, uh, when Teller and I first got together, Teller was a high school Latin teacher, mm -hmm. and Teller didn't like getting up early in the morning and scraping his car, yeah. and I was homeless. That's why he, that's why he didn't do morning shows. Not, right. not not only because, no, he told me once, he said, number one, I don't talk, so therefore I don't have to do morning shows, therefore I don't have to get up early. Yeah. I remember I would go and do, you know, the Alex Bennett show in San Francisco. Yeah. And I would get up at 5 a.m. Yeah. And I would go in and do, you know, a full four hours with you. Yeah. And I would have slept two hours. And I would come into the hotel lobby. This happened once or twice at you know 11 after we chatted a little bit after mm -hmm. i kind of stumble into the uh into the uh, hotel lobby and tell him be coming down to get breakfast going uh no <laughs> 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 oh. and then just walk by how'd it go yeah that was it yeah. but fine how's alex he's good he did he, he right. did show up uh once with you to present me with that neon sign, which I now have in my in my kitchen here, I was yep. almost going to bring it in and put it behind me, but it's uh, it's it's getting a little old, and I didn't want to move it, you know. <laughs> but it was a sure. neon neon sign that uh, you said, "Oh, my my partner Teller is in the other room. It was he was in the newsroom. He says he has something for you, and they had a big cloth over something. And he pulled it up, and there was a neon sign saying, "Fuck you, Alex." Yeah. And I that's one of my most prized possessions. Yeah, well, don't move it. Keep it. It's nice. Yeah. No, it's really nice. And and it has a story behind it because we had this whole series of events where we tried to top each other at saying, fuck you. And I still have a picture yes. of an entire crowd all saying, fuck you, Ben, with their fingers up. That so. was at the uh, Frost Amphitheater mm -hmm. at Stanford. And I had 9,000 people there for a show. And I said, I want to take a picture to give to Penn Jillette. Would everybody <laughs> give him the finger? And it's nine thousand people giving you the finger. So and one of my prized possessions. Yeah. Right but, up but right the house. neon sign I think won it. I just I <laughs> somehow it has such a sentimental place in my heart. Uh, let me ask you this. You know, magic is something that doesn't ever seem to really change. When I watch your show and I see these magicians coming on. Uh, except for some people who are using technology a little bit in their act, you, you, magic is pretty much still the same form that it's always been. It's just it seems the people doing it are so much better. Yeah, well, uh, it, is, it is remarkable. Um, you're not going to be able to. You know, uh, 19th century magicians yeah. used technology. I mean, yeah. they invented movies. They used electromagnets. Yeah. They use the latest lens and mirror technology. But the problem now is that uh, we are very up on technology. So anything I find out about, the whole audience knows as well. Yeah. There's no bit of technology that sneaks in, with, with the exception of very small amounts of radio-controlled stuff that some guys use. But it's a very small amount. But what magic is, is it's, um, I mean... Uh, it's playful, 
uh, epistemological study. It's how we determine how we get information. So it becomes, uh, you're trying to explore um, how we decide what's true. And that's a fascinating subject, but that subject is not really about technology. That subject is really about um, uh, art and how humans interact. Yeah. And the reason people have gotten so much better is the internet. It's also the reason that there are now women, uh, girls, I guess you could say, because they're all really, most of them under 18, because they've just started. Magic was a boys club. Mm -hmm. And people ask me, why was Magic a boys club? And I say, because they didn't let women in. <laughs> It wasn't, there's, there's no question do you, about it. Do you it. think it's that, or do you think there is another slight factor involved in that there's a certain socialization that women go through as children that boys have a different socialization? We're asked to be, we, we're allowed to be goofy and look silly and, and do magic. But a girl, also, that's not dignified. It's also that magic has a lot in common with mansplaining. It's a lot of... <laughs> Here I have a quarter. I'm putting it in my hand. You know, you say obvious things that women just uh, socially, there's no genetic right. thing here, I know, but socially are less are less apt to less apt to do. But the nice thing is that uh, with the internet, um, you don't have to go to a creepy club with old guys who treat you badly to get the information. Right. The information is out there, and I love the fact that I mean this is brand new, brand new. Uh, five years ago, uh, we had one girl a year come up to us with a deck of cards and go, I'm doing magic, would you sign my deck? One a year. And now it's three a week that come up and do really? a card flourish and do this and that. Yeah, it's going to be just like comedy. You know how yeah. comedy got completely but, but owned I, by I, women five years ago. I guess the question I was going for here was, do you find that technically, in, in card tricks and so on, and in presentation and so on, that the magicians that are coming up today are better than the magicians ever were because the skill set has become more, uh, it, it's almost like, you know, you always have runners that are always faster than the runners before them. Uh, there's, there's, no, there's no doubt about that. Did I just lose your sound? No, no. no okay. Okay. There's, no, there's no doubt about that. Um, I was considered okay with a deck of cards uh, 30 years ago. My skill level hasn't gone down, and now I'm not even passable. I mean, when I pull out a deck of cards, uh, young guys don't even think I can shuffle without doing gimmicks. You know, they're doing all the cardistry stuff, all this stuff. And it is all because, I believe, it's because of the internet. It's because uh, they can watch something, <clears throat> see it on video, read about it, and then work on it forever. And the wonderful the wonderful thing about magic, now not stage magic, stage magic is um, elitist. Uh, everybody who has a career at young with stage magic is from a rich family. You know, yeah. uh, all, these, all these guys, to buy the big illusions cost huge amounts of money. Well, I, think you you you, I, think you, I think you said to me once that some of these illusionists uh, the person really doing the trick is the assistant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or the guy building it. They're just pointing. But, you know, to have a deck of cards, a really good deck of cards, okay. is about $6. Yeah. About $6. And that'll last you about two weeks, you know. <laughs> so really, for 50 cents a day, you can have the most important piece of equipment in Magic. And um, <clears throat> guys are doing that. And you have an Internet connection which is much more expensive, and a deck of cards, you could be the best in the world. <laughs> you know, it's cheaper than a guitar. You, you, you many times have said to me that you just considered yourself a really good juggler. You didn't consider yourself a really good magician. You're, well, you know, there's a, there's a famous quote where um, they asked John Lennon if Ringo was the best drummer in the world. And John Lennon answered, He's not even the best drummer in the Beatles. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, and when people say, you know, 
are, are, are you one of the greatest magicians? I go, I'm not even the greatest magician in Penn and Teller. You know, yeah. Teller is one of the greatest magical minds. He's, he's, a, he, he's amazing. But you are... One of the, you are one of the greatest presenters. You're one of the greatest entertainers, right, and, right. and 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 that those two the combination of the two just work amazingly. Let let me ask you one other question before we go, because I said I'd only keep you about twenty five minutes here. Uh, you lost a hundred pounds. Hundred and ten, yeah. Hundred and ten. Have you, you gained some of that back at all? Uh, about seven. Over two and a half years. Yeah. But that's down below that too that time. There's a there's a fluctuation. About four percent of body weight fluctuation is fine. Yeah. Well, I I tended to uh, I I lost uh, 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 over sixty pounds mm -hmm. myself. I did that over a year and a half. You did it in a hundred days. I a, a pound. Uh, a, a little bit more than that. It was uh I I, I averaged uh, 0. 0.9 pounds a day. So about. 120 days, yeah. Wow. And, uh, it was, uh, there's been weird studies that have shown that the faster you take the weight off, the more likely you are to keep it off. Very counterintuitive. But then again, I did a complete lifestyle change. I did not do a diet that ended. I did a diet that was, I'm now going to eat like this. And I now eat uh, very anti-American. Yeah. You know, I, I don't eat cheeseburgers. I don't eat pizza. Uh, I, you know, no animal products, uh, yeah. no refined grains, extremely low salt, sugar, and fat. But it's not, uh, I'm not an ethical vegan. I'm a health vegan, which means if every three weeks my daughter says, have a hot fudge Sunday with me, dad, I have a hot fudge Sunday with her. Right. Because I don't, although I'll tell you, once you lose your taste for meat, which happens after about three months, all the cravings go away. Um, the ethical stuff really comes in. You start going, you know, maybe we shouldn't be using animals, uh, making them suffer and destroying the environment with them. Maybe we shouldn't be doing that. It's very hard to feel that when you're longing for a cheeseburger. I am the opposite. I'm the opposite of you. I'm the opposite of you. Uh, I went on a low carb diet and ate, no ate nothing but meat. Mm -hmm. And that's how I lost the weight. So I guess and, it's whatever and, works for you. But you didn't. Uh, you, you're not still on that, are you? Uh, I'm. I, I. I. I'm worried now because I stopped, and so I'm trying to put on a few pounds to see if I can do it, and I'm having a hard time putting on the pounds. I, apparently, I've just I'm stabilized at a certain point, and uh, I've been that way for phew, God, maybe uh, six months. Eight months, something like that. So you're wicked old, Alex. You're dying. That's I know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm quite old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite old. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm the old fart that I thought everybody else was. Sure. Yeah. We all are. Hey, Penn. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. It's always a pleasure, Alex. Yeah. Well, let's let's do this more often. Not, not every 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 week, but you know, every every couple of months. Let's let's get together and talk. Okay. Oh, my email, and you finally stop changing yours every 15 minutes. Yeah, well, I was going through a whole thing where, you know, you leave your old ISP and you lose your email address you've had for 15 years, and it becomes a very complicated situation. But it was a nightmare, Alex. Anyway, I, love I, I, as always, love to everybody. Give my best to tell her. I admire the man. He's an intelligent human being. And uh, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Ladies Mike and gentlemen, Howard. Penn Gillette. We'll see you, man. Bye-bye. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Yeah, okay. That's our old friend Penn Gillette, and we thought we'd rerun that interview since we haven't shown it but once uh, in the past, so uh, I thought we'd uh, just do it. What the hell? Why not? I was feeling lazy tonight. I'm kind of a little disoriented tonight. I don't know why. I've been uh, uh, disoriented all day long, and I can't figure out why. Uh, but, uh, you know, that happens. That happens. I want to show you something before we go to the panel. I want to show you what assholes they are over at Skype, okay? Now, as you know, or, or maybe you don't know, uh, Skype... 
uh, is changing from the old Skype to the new Skype. And at one point they said, come September 1st, we're just, you, your old Skype isn't going to work. Okay. Well, then they came out with an announcement saying that they were foregoing that and that you can keep using what we call Skype Classic. Okay. Now, look what comes up on my screen today. This is, this is a change from where it has been. Look at that. This version of Skype has been discontinued. To continue using Skype, update to the latest version today. Uh, why can't they say, look, if you're using this version, we're not supporting it any longer, but you can keep using it? Because that's exactly what's happening. Look, the big, big red dot there, so it annoys me all the time when I sign on. And, uh, uh, you know, they're real scumbags over there at Skype. i got to say that. They really are. Uh, I have hated uh, this company for the longest time because, they, you know, it, it took a really working hard, I mean, a, a lot of yelling and screaming on the part of uh, people. I'm just doing some stuff here while I'm talking. Uh, on, the, uh, on the part of uh, uh, people uh, uh, yelling and screaming at them that they don't like the new Skype, for them to say, okay, well, you can keep using the old Skype if you want to for the foreseeable future. They don't say what that means. And, you know, I, um, uh, I have adapted myself to maybe go with the new system, uh, but I don't want to. You know, I really don't want to. And uh, it doesn't look good, and it's a big problem. And I, you know. So anyway, that's how annoying Skype has gotten. Um, and I just, uh, it just it bothers me, you know. Uh, I, I have a little show to run here, and I don't need them mucking up the works. I mean, for all that I've done in promoting Skype, uh, the least they could do for all the, the people who care about them is not annoy us with some fucking sign like that, right? Very annoying. And then up until today, every now and then a thing would come on and say, uh, uh, you know, do you want to up, upgrade to the new Skype? And then it would go away. And then uh, the next time I would turn on, it did that again and again and again and again. So what the hell? Anyway, look, uh, give us a call if you want to give us a call. If you don't want to give us a call, I didn't feel like doing this show tonight anyway. So uh, I can just uh, cut, cut it off early and... Um, and uh, just uh, call it a day. I, I've wondered, you know, I, I was saying to uh, uh, Albert when he was here, I said, you know, man, there's some nights I just don't feel like doing the show. And he said, well, then don't do it. And I thought, you know, that's not a bad idea. I should just do it whenever I feel like doing it. Uh, but, I, you know, I like to be here on a regular basis because that's my training in radio. You know, you go on every day that you're supposed to go on. And you, uh, you you make it a regular habit. So I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, uh, but uh, nobody seems to be calling. That's that's a good sign. Why I'm saying that's a good sign is it's a good sign because then I can just turn the whole thing off and, you know, relax for the evening. Oh, damn it. Phil always comes along and ruins things. See, I could have gotten out of here if it wasn't for you. And there's no rest for the wicked. No rest for the wicked, yeah. Uh, so did you go to the Apple store today? Yes, I did. What's the outcome? Uh, it's a logic. Fill the people in. Fill the a, people it's in. It's a logic is... board, probably. Yeah. Oh, uh, really? If I'm, uh, they don't, he, the guy didn't think it was the power supply, but, you know, it could be the power supply. But yeah. uh, to repair it, I'm having him do it, is going to cost me $370. Same one with the i7 and the 3.0 and oh, yeah, the no, 16? It's the, yeah, it's the same logic. But they can't put another logic. Well, they could oh. put another logic board in there, but that'd be downgrading it. Right. So yeah. why, why should we do that? You know? Yeah, because that thing was maxed out. Yeah, that it, it's I and then the guy was kind of dumb at the Genius Bar. I mean, he was kind of a kind of a moron 
Well, if you're standing at a bar that uh, labels you as a genius, you're not that smart. Well, <laughs> yeah, if you have to point, have a pointer to you saying genius. Well, no, I said to him, he said to me, he said, so it's going to cost $370. So it'd probably be better buying a new one. And I said, the one that I'm fixing, if I want to replace it, is going to cost me almost $1,400. He went, right. oh, yeah, you're better doing this. You know, yeah. I mean, you moron. You know, you know, there's not much there other than the logic board. You know, well, there, so. yeah, there's a logic board, but there's also a power supply, and there's also a hard drive, and I hope that didn't yeah. get blown because that could cost yeah. a lot of money. Uh, but for the most part, uh, I think it's probably the logic board that went went bluey on me. So. Yeah, are these guys going to test the hard drive and so forth before they go ahead and delve into it? I'm I'm sure they're going to open it up and see what 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 is probably burned yeah. and you know fried yeah. uh and uh yeah they'll, they'll probably do that yeah uh, hi yeah. sg how are you good hey uh you know you're you were almost racist when you were talking about skype i was you almost said that they were uh you didn't say mucking around but you said they're mucking mucking around so you came pretty close to being racist. Oh, mean, like uh, that guy DeSantis in Florida? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, listen, I have to, if you, it, uh, you know, to defer to you guys on this, because I know where you're going to stand on it, and I probably agree with you. Come on, let's let's quit being so picky. Uh, you know, he, I don't think he meant that a black person reminded him of a no, monkey. No, he, he was picking on monkeys. Well, it, all, I'm, all, all I'm saying is, is that, that I, I felt that in this case, everybody's been a little overly sensitive. I mean, but the phrase, the phrase you used was mucking, mucking, mucking around. Mucking around. Well, that's different than monkeying so it's just, around. It's, just a, it's, it's an idiom. It's no, an it's idiom the muck, that people use. It, it, it has to do with me. It's the muck and mire. I, I, I don't know exactly. <laughs> what, I, I can't remember exactly what he said. But I know what he was trying to say, and it, he didn't. But they go, "Oh yeah, well you know it's racist code." No, it's yes. not. You know, it, you know what, it, it, it attracts dogs. It's you a know, barking. You know what, it's what, a you know dog what, whistle. What appeared to me more in his speech, and the thing that bothered me more, was using uh, socialism as a fear tactic. It is. Yeah, well, no. Hold on a second. I mean, saying, "Oh, this guy is going to is a socialist. He's going to bring socialism." Blah 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 blah. They're using that this year. That's what the Republicans cry is to make people afraid of socialism, which, you know, the kind, they don't realize how much socialism they already have in their life that they don't want to get rid of, like the police department or the uh, fire department or, or the, Venezuela or the school system, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, there's a book uh, that... Um, uh, that's out. There used to be a book called The One Minute Manager. And uh, the guy who wrote The One Minute Manager came out with another book called The One Minute Manager Meets the Monkey. And it has nothing to do as a racial thing. The monkey is the task. And the salespeople and staff yeah. want to put the monkey. It's a, like monkey bars. You're climbing well, to the what, top what of the monkey trying, What are you trying to prove? What, what I'm saying is, is that the use of the monkey... Uh, idiom has nothing to do well, with look, racism I remember in years, most cases. Years ago, well, there, there's, there's another thing that one of these uh, these women on CNN and I had got my full uh, uh, gut of mad cow today um, was uh, you can't use articulate because that toward a black person saying they're articulate. So give me the list of things I can't say. Well, no, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I remember th somebody got in trouble for this once before, you know, years ago. Do you remember who? Uh, yeah, the, uh, the the Greek guy. No, uh, no. Uh, oh, Howard Cosell. Howard Cosell. When he said when some some black look football player was. Look yeah. at yeah. that little monkey yeah. go. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. You know, uh, but today he wouldn't be working the next day. Back then it was like, oh, <laughs> did you hear what he said? That's terrible. All right. I, I can accept monkey, but you can't say a person's articulate. I didn't. I, well, in what context no, can't you say no, that somebody's it was, articulate? It was, this, it was this black woman who was on CNN who was saying, this is code that you can't say about black people, that they're articulate. Why? 
I uh, there's a guy on That's the. No I, was, I use that term today for oh. a black guy because there's a guy yeah. on on TMZ named Van, who's yeah. very bright, very smart, uh, very hip, and yes. and I s- said to Marjorie, I said, and really articulate. You know, yeah, he has no, a mastery of the. You can't he, say that. He has so. a great mastery of the English language. Because you're liberal, you can say it. But if you're conservative, you would no, be I, out I, as I, saying that you are pandering. You're making some sort of deal that normally these people aren't articulate. Well, you know, one of the reasons you can't keep up with it, you can't keep up with the rules, is because there's always some black person going on CNN or MSNBC uh, who is making up a rule. Oh, and, and every day they change. I mean, uh, I, I, who do we go to as the last word in what's right and wrong in this? Al Sharpton. First rock. No, Al Sharpton <laughs> will say one thing, but uh, somebody else would say something else altogether. You know, and um, I don't think that what, I mean, this guy is a creep. I think he's a terrible guy down in Florida. Uh, but, DeSantis? Yeah, DeSantis. I think he's just. Oh, I, I, think fi- so. I find uh, him. Trump likes him. I f- yeah, well, that's why I particularly find him creepy. <laughs> uh, but. Um, oh, wait that? a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, 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 you've got to. I think so. he's ca- calling the wrong number. Yeah, you're calling the wrong number. Uh, uh, he doesn't hear you. You'd have to put us on hold. Go to him. Oh, well, uh, I'm not going to do it. Uh, uh, it was. What's his name? Uh, uh, Jeff. Jeff. Jeff, you got to make a, a, you know, a, a fresh call. You can't come in with one of the groups. He'll, he'll figure it out. Yeah, he'll figure it out. Anyway, uh, I just, you know, I, 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 I heard this today, and Marjorie said, "Oh, isn't that yeah. terrible what he said?" And I said, "What's terrible about it?" You know, I mean, it wasn't like I mean, I'll give the guy the benefit of the doubt. That he wasn't racist in what he was saying. He didn't mean any racial slurry. He wasn't calling the guy a monkey. He was saying monkey. It was going to if he were allowed to be governor, uh, he would be socialistic and uh, he would monkey up the system or something well, like could, that. He, he you was. Could, you could take you could take what you said earlier, Alex, and what he said, and they would almost be the same thing. Let's not monkey this up. And they started said, with an M. Well, I said monkey, muck this right. up. Skype is just mucking mucking this up. Yeah. It's like just something people say. You know, it, it it's it's better not to say it. You know, uh, but well, well no, hey, but, but how do you know? How do you know at any given time? You know, what, who somebody should send out a memo every day to all of us so we so we know. Well, you know, you know it, it's like uh, and, there are enough ethnic slurs against Jews. And by the instance. way, if he were a liberal, although were, we don't get pissed, if he were a liberal, nobody would be yelling. <laughs> Uh, maybe yeah. If, if he had, if he were liberal and he had said, uh, well, you know, we shouldn't monkey around with this situation. And there was a black guy who he was running against who was yeah. a Republican. Uh, nobody would say you're being racist, because right. it's the. Pol- I have to admit, as a lefty, the most, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The most politically correct people are liberals. This is why I hate liberals. You you know, I've said this before that I hate liberals. I, I like leftists, but I don't like liberals. Uh, because liberals are exactly that way. They're mealy mouth little bastards who suddenly find something you know, elitist. They look, this guy DeSantis, we don't want to see him be governor. Go down and fight him and all of that, but don't don't suddenly say he's a racist because he used the word monkey in, in in saying that they were monkeying around with the system, you know, yeah. uh, there's a fair way to win this fight, you know. All right. Well, the the guy who was running against him is the mayor of Tallahassee, and I understand that his record isn't so great. I I need to look it up, but this is what I've been told or heard uh, by uh, others that uh, you know the way the city of Tallahassee has been functioning hasn't been all that good. And uh, what what did DeSantis do to the way the get state him? of Florida has been run isn't that good? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what did DeSantis do to uh, to? It was he a businessman or something? I, I don't know what he was. I I haven't been paying attention to that race. Yeah, all. I think he was an outsider, a businessman, that kind of thing. Maybe that's yeah. why Trump supported but him. I just saw that everybody was getting pissy about him. Yeah, you know. Uh, is there uh, there's another topic that uh, sort of interests me. 
uh, which is, uh, I guess, the attorney for uh, Lanny Davis for uh, for um, what's his name, uh, yeah. Trump's attorney, uh, uh, oh. Michael, uh, yeah, Cohen, uh, is recanting uh, his statement. Uh, uh, about the meeting, the Donald Trump uh, meeting and Donald Trump being aware of it. And uh, he it took him three weeks to recant this statement and say it's not accurate and it's not true. And he never got that information from Cohen right. when he said Cohen said that this meeting took place. Yeah. And uh, he also they raised four hundred thousand dollars on a GoFundMe to support Cohen and pay for Lanny Davis. Right. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, this is the kind of thing that Trump calls fake news. And also CNN has not issued an apology or I'll, a I'll retraction. Tell you, I'll tell you what I'm, getting, getting, I'll tell you what I'm, I'll tell you what I'm getting tired of. I'm getting tired of the term fake news. Uh, it, it No, it is a just... Uh, okay, uh, phony news. No, it isn't phony oh, news. The news is, up no, news. No, the, the news is never... <laughs> most of the news is never phony. I mean... Yeah, if you read somebody's Twitter post or, you know, Facebook post, there but, might be some fake. Well, let me finish. Yeah. Let me finish. But the people who are in the business of news are not out to make the news fake. However, nobody looks at something with the same lens. And so each of the, you know, the fact is that Trump loves uh, Fox, okay, because their lens is in his favor. Uh, it, it's the fact that any of these people, whether they're Fox or, or, or uh, CNN or MSNBC, are all biased on, in some way, shape, or form. Let me finish, Phil. Yeah, in, okay. in, in, uh, in, in a, any way, shape, or form. And I've got to tell you that when uh, Ted Turner started CNN, he started it because he didn't like the fact that the news was biased that when somebody read a story, it was slanted. And he came up with a bunch of rules, so when CNN first started, there wasn't a slant there. You reported the news, right? Can I finish? Uh, well, no, I'm, C. Fin I'm, I'm not finished yet. Uh, 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 I'm not right. finished yet. Uh, he uh, also told them that, hey, we're an international organization, and we never refer to another country as they. We refer to them as that country, right? Uh, so, I mean, uh, originally, even Ted Turner saw the problems with the news. He, he was watching um, Dan Rather, and Dan Rather read a story, and then he smirked. And he said, that's what set him off, and that's why he put all his money into starting a news organization. Okay, now, Good Phil. move. Yeah. Sure. Uh, well, Bernstein, uh, you know, of the Woodward and Bernstein fame, mm -hmm. he hopped on this story and it seems as though he didn't really vet, uh, he, uh, he didn't name his source, which was Lanny Davis. Yeah. Uh, and so it was an anonymous source. And, right. they're, and, and they're saying, you know, that Bernstein basically cooked this up. And they're trying to protect his reputation uh, by not recanting the story. But, uh, and then, you know, there's other things that go on beyond this. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, Bruce Orr. And the uh, Fusion GPS, as well as the dossier, which everybody jumped on, uh, not only did it give them the uh, FISA uh, 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 warrant uh, uh, probable cause, but it also, uh, it, it turns out that it's a fabrication uh, uh, paid for by uh, uh, people I, I, that were anti-Trump. I have heard that, but you've heard watching your fake news that it's a fabrication. <laughs> Oh, well, I I won't go for any fake news. That's, of course, uh, but you got your no, information. No, no, I heard it from from senators that interviewed Bruce Orr oh, this see. morning. Yeah, and, and, where, and where, were on and where the did, news. And where did you hear them? Uh, I I heard them not only on CBSN but also on Fox. Mm-hmm. And and these senators. Uh, well, how, well that if were it's on fake the, news, if it's fake news, how do you know it's true? <laughs> Oh, uh, it's true because, uh, because you, you don't want believe to, it. Because you want to believe it. It's what you want to hear. If, if, if you don't believe it, then I know it's true. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. That and you're, and you're, even you're talking, Shakespeare you're, said, you're, unto thy own self You're talking about the fake news, and somehow when the fake news says what you want it to say, it isn't fake. Uh, but it's not. Hey, if, uh, hey, it what kind be, of argument are you using here? It, was, the, was this dossier trumped up? And was no. uh, was no. it incorrectly reported no. that uh, that there was a meeting I, I that honestly, Trump knew about? I honestly believe 
and also want to believe that uh, uh, hookers in Russia got peed on by Donald Trump. <laughs> I, I believe it, too. Have you ever tried and to pee I, on a woman, by the way? Very difficult to do on cue. I, if he did it, I admire him greatly. Not if they take out your prostate. Uh, well. I, I want to see it to music. I want to see it. Yeah. You know, I had this one, one woman I knew who, uh, who liked that sort of thing, and she would, I had a stand-up shower, and she said, let's go in there and you can pee on me. And I couldn't get a stream going to save my life. Now, you know? what about these it's, things? It's where the you same can thing get when a I woman go, to orgasm. When I pee. when I go to a doctor and he says pee in the bottle, I you know there's a little bit at the bottom by the time I'm through. What? I I'm a champion when it comes to peeing in the bottle. <laughs> that, that doesn't. I, I could have just peed and they give me another bottle and oh yeah, I'll fill that up. I'll pee in this. See, see that cup you got, SG? I I can overflow that. Yeah, <laughs> right, you're right, right, yeah. <laughs> uh, but but you know so I mean uh, uh, let's 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 uh, let's uh, do you feel better now SG good yeah I feel uh, better. Uh, uh, you got any more light SG uh, oh, and, yeah I work on that all right yeah just pay the just pay the bill put your light bulb <laughs> yeah yeah uh, uh, you know I mean so I I, I you know I, it's just. The fake news is any news that you don't want to believe, and that, that I find that's why I find the whole term just horrible, and well, terrible, and destructive to journalism as a whole. There are a lot of great journalists who do their due diligence, some of which even do it without using prejudice as part of their reporting. But how do you ask? How do you ask a reporter, Phil? How yeah. do you ask a reporter to be unbiased? Everybody's biased. You couldn't be a reporter. You would look no. at a story and you would see one thing, no. and I would look at no. the same story if, and see another. No, if I was being hired to be a professional and I needed to create an unbiased piece, I could do it. But uh, no, you could. What happened? No, what, you could. What I know your what politics, is, Phil. You couldn't. It doesn't you matter what my I, politics it, are. No, it, so, does, it doesn't matter. A, you know, I could separate myself when I was doing cop work. And, and be you know, just totally professional, do the job with no bias whatsoever. And uh, you know, it, it's it's possible to do. You're going to say you didn't but, have you. You're going to say that you couldn't. Let, your bias has played no part in your being a policeman. No. And, are you and sure of that? The only so? thing that would happen is when uh, is if we had a very stressful situation, a lot of death, a lot of shooting, a lot of a lot of stuff going on, and we had something called church where we'd go uh, uh, have a couple of beers and, and tell jokes and, 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 you know, just graveyard humor to try to get emotionally past what's been going on. Yeah, and that emotional thing didn't affect the way you looked at the situation? No, you, well, not when you're actually Bullshit. doing the investigation. Bullshit, Phil, you're a human being. Uh, it doesn't matter when you're professional. You you you're able. All right, to but we're, get, that. we're getting off the main argument. All right. right. The main uh, thing is about the news and the fact okay. that it's very hard to find a reporter that doesn't have his own personal view. I even somebody like Walter Cronkite, when he was reporting the news, you couldn't tell where he stood. You couldn't tell right. left or right. Uh, I think he was probably on the left, but you know. Everybody imprinted upon them their own idea of where he stood politically. Today, you know where people stand politically, where the news well, people stand. And my question is this. Would you rather know where your news person stands politically or not know and then hear him report the news? I'd, I'd rather hear all the news and, the, and no, no, what no, I no, see no, 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 Wait a minute. Well, wait not, a minute. You, you got your no, shot. No, wait a minute. It's my show. You, well, you, that's okay. Yeah. I'm one of your guests. <laughs> are you? I'm a guest uh, in your home. That. Are you? You're are a, you? no. You're an yeah. intruder. You're a burglar. Uh, <laughs> no, but my question. Yes, Jeff. Yes, Jeff. Uh, Phil, I, I think as a police guy, that you have to go into an into a, a position where there's another car and another person and. And maybe the car is a Corvette, and it's got a, a loud mufflers and whatever. And you, you're already making decisions and and, and making prejudicial uh, discussions before you even get out there and talk to the guy. It's, uh, it's most your nature. Of, most to, of it is safe. To be observing. 
Right, but most and of it also is also to make sure is this a safe place for me to go in, or do I really get another cop to come with me on this? Well, on, you know when you're when you're, you have to make uh, instantaneously. Right, and, but when and if you, I would assume that if you're on TV, you got to do those same things. Well, look, uh, people, uh, you know, fans, people who are fans want to tune into people who they agree with generally. If you really want to get drunk, though, uh, tune into the Rachel Maddow show, and every time she says "if," take a shot. I never noticed that. I don't listen to it. If her, but... this were to be true, if that were to be true, and if that happened, pretty soon. That's why I'm so drunk tonight. I watched. Oh, oh. okay. Rachel. Well, uh, two so things. You like her her show? No, I like her. I think she's a good presenter. I didn't. She's I didn't got a nice ass. Her. I enjoy people who are entertaining. I mean, where did that I like come Alex. from? I like we're Alex because he's entertaining, but no other reason. We're talking. I, I like those leather pants. We're talking about the news, <laughs> and and we're well, talking Rachel about Maddow. a woman reporter, and you're saying she has a nice ass. Yes, she does. Is that the so, way? So that's the way you watch your news. Well, uh, if I watch Fox, they have nice legs. <laughs> Well, yeah. I mean, can a can a gay woman have a nice ass? Yes, she can. Especially in those leather. Well, pants. you know, I always uh, I always liked. Uh, it's not so much lesbians, but women who had a certain 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 masculinity. You know, a certain <laughs> tomboy quality. And one day I was over at Air America, and I see this woman, and I go, "She's hot." And it was Rachel Maddow. No, <laughs> see, <laughs> you know, so. Uh, hey, I, I uh, later found out it was Rachel Maddow because at that time she was just doing radio and you didn't know what she looked like. Yeah. Can, can I answer uh, Jeff's question? Uh, cops, and when they're professional, they have one goal, and that's called search and seize. Search the other and one seize. Is beat they're up the they're looking. Beat up the They're black looking guy. for crimes, uh, and it doesn't matter who the person is. Uh, and and a person who's dressed in a three-piece suit can pull a forty-five out of his car when when you walk up to it just as much as you know uh, uh, somebody that uh, looks like a gangbanger, um, you know. And it it doesn't doesn't matter uh, how they're dressed, what they're driving, uh, you know. The you know the your, way I feel. You know the risk. way I feel about the police is you took the yeah. fucking job. Now shut up. Don't, yeah, well, don't bellyache about it. Home. Oh, there's danger every moment around every corner. Well, if that's the case, go find another job. Well, that's why you're careful. Now, as far as the news goes, uh, and now, careful, what happens is, is, is the different networks shooting, sho it, show it, it, certain types of stories. And you won't hear pro-Trump stories on MSNBC. You'll, you'll, hear, you'll read them on the Washington Times you'll possibly hear some sort of uh, pro-Trump or could be anti-Trump uh, on uh, Fox News. But if you want to get the full uh, Monty, if you want to be able to see both sides, you have to listen to all. You know, if you really want to see news, I got to tell you this. Right next to uh, MSNBC on my cable is BBC America or BBC yeah. News. Uh, and I watch BBC News. And I'm getting news. I mean, I'm getting stuff I never heard about. Do you know there, there are riots in Delhi? Do you know that? Delhi, India? Do you know that? No pastrami? Uh, that uh, in some other place I heard about a woman who had her period so she wasn't being allowed to stay in her house in a certain country. I mean, these are the kind of stories you find on BBC. Watch BBC and get away from all this bullshit of Trump 24-7. You know? I mean, MSNBC may as well take on the name the Trump Broadcasting System, because the all they do, all they do every hour is talk about Trump, and I'm so fucking sick of it because he's not that newsworthy. Okay. But have you but, seen his golf game lately? No, and I don't care Tiger to because I don't like watching people. Tiger Woods. Yeah, Tiger Woods got his black card uh, rescinded. How did that happen? Oh, he came out and said, you know, you gotta. They asked him about the president, and he says you have to respect the office of the president. And now the black people are calling him Asian. 
Well, he's not really black after all. I guess he's got small hands. <laughs> well, it, you know, I I don't know. I think if you're in that kind of venue, you're best to keep your mouth shut. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not, not. Uh, I don't think you have to, but I think it's best for yourself, because uh, it, it, number one, you're not going to be able to change much of anything because of how you feel. That's uh, true. And um, I mean, yes, you you jump in when you see that a miscarriage of justice is done somewhere and say something about it. But you know, to say I'll respect the the office of the presidency. Why? For what God fucking given reason? Why? I'll well, my dad, my dad told me the same thing. Yeah, but but do you respect the office of the presidency, or do you respect yeah. the person who's in it if he if he respects the office yeah. of the president? I, I didn't go ballistic against Obama. I didn't go ballistic against Clinton. They 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 made decisions. I said, okay, let's see where it goes. Yeah, but I didn't like have a heart attack about it. But but on the other hand, how can you respect a man who doesn't even respect the office himself? Maybe he does. You're just falling for the media hype. No, I'm watching with my own two eyes on any number. Of, and I, believe it or not, I take in a lot of Fox just so I get that balance. OK, and I watch Glenn Beck. So I get that oh. balance. Well, I, I like I think Beck's a good communicator, uh, but I watch Glenn Beck, uh, you know, so I'm it's not like I'm getting all my news from one place. And but you, are you believing what you get from Fox, or are you just being cynical about it? Uh, I have to filter it through what I know Fox to be. Okay, do you filter what you know MSNBC to be? Absolutely. Absolutely. And do you feel that uh, but, you're getting... Didn't you, I mean, haven't you heard me griping about this for the last couple of weeks? The fact sure. that MSNBC just harps away at things Trump's doing... And, and goes there and uh, 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 is always bashing him constantly. Now, I'm not I would, saying... I would say on, I'm I not, would say on I, Fox, I'm, Brett Baer is probably the most, you know, as a news person that most people could, on either side, listen to. Shepard Smith. Shepard Smith's pretty good, too. Ooh. Well, why, what Brett, didn't you like about Shepard Smith? He's... he's Anti-Trump. He sucks. Brett Baer is the most sort of even-keeled person mm -hmm. on Fox. I don't know who would be the equivalent of Brett Baer on CNN, for example. Um, I, I don't know. I don't watch. I don't. I watch CNN the least of any of the networks. Or yeah. MSNBC. Who would be the equivalent of Brett Baer? I don't know because most of them are so opinionated now. Brett Bear is not that to say oh, that the, I can't name anybody that I consider even keeled over at MSNBC. Can you? What Jeff? about Wolf Blitzer Jeff? at CNN? I think Blitzer tries to be. Yeah. Yeah, but I can't stand Blitzer. Uh, <laughs> he was lousy on Jeopardy. He was, he was wasn't so smart he? After all. I don't even know who Brett Bear is. Yeah. I've never heard of well, he's Papa Bear. He's son. one of their commentators. Yeah. Papa Bear. On, on Fox? Yeah. He's he's more of a, this is the story. He's a newsman. He he's yeah. he's okay. less less opinionated, and he just sort of asks people their opinions, and then he says, okay, let's go from there. Yeah. Right there. So, you know, that, that's that's good. Anyway, so, my, 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 my favorite is Greg Gutfeld because the dude's hilarious. Oh, he's funny, yeah. Is anybody else? But, is anybody else going to call tonight, or, or is this it? Am I am I stuck with SG oops. and Phil and and Jeff? I don't I I don't mind being stuck with Jeff. Phil, <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. Jeff, and SG is is I think Thank far you. more reasonable than you'd like to believe about stuff. I've been taking shots watching the Rachel Maddow show. Yeah. Every time she says if. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch her. I, I find her very hard to deal with, to take, you know. What uh, if you turn the sound off? The only guy, I'll tell you, the only guy that I, the only person I like really at MSM, it was one, there are a couple of them that I like. I like, uh, I like Chuck Todd. Okay. 
I think Chuck Todd is uh, pretty good at what he does. And uh, this, uh, this guy, Ali Belshi, and, and Stephanie Rule, uh, they have a Vel show called Velshi Rule, and they each have their own shows. Uh, they, but they're, in the case of, of Rule, she's very opinionated. And Velshi is, a, is an economics guy, so he tear, rips uh, Trump a new asshole economically. So I kind of like him to watch. But of all of them, I like Chuck Todd because I think Todd presents uh, the news very well. well he, which he, one is uh, Schmarkanish on? Oh, that, yeah. He's... Who cares with a name like Schmarkanish? I, 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 I know. I like him. Uh, he's, he's real lefty, but, you know, I, I, I he watch him. He thinks he's a lefty. He's an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, that that goes without saying, but I, you know, I, I listen to. Him. And then there's that guy on Fox that's also on uh, NRA TV, B Babino, or uh, oh, he's a black yeah. guy, uh, Bra Bra Barbarino, or Barbarino. Yeah, Barbarino. Hey, Mister Katia. Yeah, Katia. Hey, this is the uh, what is this the 35th anniversary of Welcome Home, Cotter? Only you or, would know that or care. Hey. <laughs> bada boom. I always consider that bada one, of the, bada one, bing. one of the worst yeah. TV shows in history. Yeah? Yeah. Boy, hardly any callers tonight. Hardly any viewers tonight. God, what's happening? Am, are we losing it all, or is it just we're getting towards the uh, Labor Day weekend? Uh, you know, I don't know. The people who call this show don't have anything to do anyway. What would it matter if it was the Labor Day weekend? Last night we were all filled <laughs> up. Last night we had a full house, right? Yeah. Right. Tonight, yeah. tonight nothing. What, what What's with you folks out there? They had enough. They, yeah, they had enough. They got they had their fill last night. Yeah, fill of fill. Yeah, and we didn't <laughs> even have SG last night. You know, so we we legitimately had a full house without SG. Yeah. We're nothing though. Huh? Yeah. How? How insulting! We're nothing. No, I didn't absolutely say, nothing. I, I, we're we're cannon fodder. Oh my God! Well, you yeah. two guys are nothing. Jeff's That's okay. That's racist. Jeff's okay. <laughs> no, no, it's 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 a dog whistle. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a blowhorn. Yes, Jeff. <laughs> so I, I went to New York today. Uh huh. I went to see a, a play. Mm hmm. It's called Come From Away. Oh yeah. Probably very popular these days. Uh, and but. I, uh, I believe that uh, Albert went to see it and said it sucked. Really? Yeah. Who, who's, who's, like who's calling on the phone? He didn't like it. Hi, it's Allison. You said no one was calling, so I decided to call tonight. Oh, okay, Allison. Very good. It's terrific. Yep. Uh, uh, I don't yeah. know. Move this person from the group. Are you there, Allison? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I am. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Let me just put your name in there so I know what it is here. Well, I can't do that. So, oh well. Uh, hmm. Now, uh, does is anybody calling? Allison's got is calling on a phone. Is it a Skype phone or is it a regular phone? Because I say, spent. Uh, huh? What you saying? You was saying something. You spent what? Is this? Uh, I spent eight cents. On Skype, I, I put twenty dollars in to make phone calls on Skype. I called myself before I called Alex's show, and I've only I only used eight cents. That's now nineteen dollars and ninety two cents, and it didn't cost me to call your show on Skype. I don't understand why. Uh, on oh. Sunday, no, well, I don't but know. Uh, it's uh, my phone here. I still uh, it's down to fifteen dollars and twenty cents. And so. what'd you start with? Uh, uh twenty dollars. Is it recharges itself at ten? I want to hear about oh. the play. Was it a musical or was it a, just a play? It's about a bunch of people, isn't it, who get stuck in Iceland or someplace like that or Greenland? It's, it's in Canada. Yeah, Canada. Uh, and what happens is, remember nine eleven? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here's all these airplanes coming over from Europe uh, to come to New York and and wherever in the United States. And they say, oh, wait a minute. There happens to be an airplane, uh, airport in Canada that's huge, that they haven't used it for years. And we, we're going to put oh, 
a whole bunch of these airplanes. So he, they, they do it in this little town mm -hmm. that had 7,000 people. And guess what? 7,000 people show up the same day, all on airplanes. And nobody is telling them what the hell's going on. Because nobody actually knows. Yeah. Now, this is a musical, isn't it? It's a musical, yeah. 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 yeah, and I, it's I, pretty good. Albert, I enjoyed it. Albert didn't like it. He thought it was, yeah. you know. We went to a show the other day. We went to see uh, the play that goes wrong. Uh, yeah. uh, have you heard about this? No. They sort, did. sort of like this show? <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you, SG. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, no, there's a, uh, there, there was a couple of TV shows they did in England. Peter Pan Goes Wrong and Christmas Carol Goes Wrong. And it's just that every, uh -oh. everything goes wrong. You know, and so this is the play that goes wrong, and they did it on Broadway, and it's very funny. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, the, at the end, the whole set comes crashing down on them. You know? <laughs> what What do Broadway tickets cost nowadays? Depends on what the show is. The, this one, they were about 125 a piece, but it was a small theater. It was a small company, uh, and uh, it it you know there wasn't a lot of. Uh, of uh, that they it wasn't an expensive show to mount. On the other yeah. hand, you go to a musical. What did you pay? Uh, uh, I think it was. I think it cost one hundred and twenty-five or something. Oh, really? Like that. That's cheap because usually. Yeah. But well, we also got a. We had, I think it was like thirty people who went. Wow. On a bus. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you got a deal. Uh, you got a, a deal because a of the volume bus. deal. And uh, you know, yeah. if, you're, if you're taking your girlfriend or wife, you say it's fantastic, no matter how crummy it was. Well, hmm. yeah. yeah. Do they still have those half-off ticket booths where the day of the yeah. show? Yeah. 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 There was a lot of people uh, 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 who yeah. who stand. Yeah. Oh, oh, really? Oh man. Yeah, and there was really a lot of people there. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Uh, Allison, uh, uh, where yes. are you, where are you calling from? I'm in Bayside, New York. Bayside, Queens. Yes. Ah, that's where you grew up. Is that where you grew up, Jeff? Okay. Yeah. Where is yeah, Sunnyside, Queens? No, uh, Jeff said that. No, Sunnyside is a little bit like closer to the city. Yeah. All right. When when I was when I was first born, uh, even though I was born in Brooklyn, my parents lived in Sunnyside in uh, 1954. And uh, I guess it was nice then, is it? Uh, it's not so nice yeah. anymore, right? Well, it's changed. It's changing back now. All the young uh -huh. people are moving there because it's close to the city. Yeah. The whole area is changing. Wow. But my uncle and his family lived in Sunnyside the same year that you were there. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There was a, an actress, uh, I think her name was uh, McCormick or something. She was in The Bad Seed. And she used to roller skate, my mother said, uh, uh, around Patty the McCormick. Front yeah, Patty McCormick, exactly. And so she used to live in that neighborhood, and uh, she was a few years old and running around on her roller skates. Do you remember that movie, Alex, uh, The Bad Seed? Yes, I saw that. Yeah, yeah it was scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she never had much of a she never had That's much my of a, metal. She never had much of a career after that. No. No. That's, <laughs> yeah. You would have thought, you know, the the picture was a very big picture, and she, everybody, yeah. you know, even to this day, Allison remembers the name Patty McCormick. Mm -hmm. But tell me one yeah. other thing Patty McCormick did after that. Nothing. Mm. Nothing. Yeah. Was she the Morton Salt uh, girl? No. You know, with the pigtails. <laughs> <laughs> did Jeff say he grew up in Bayside? Did he say that? I did. Did you what street? What area? What part of Bayside? Oh, let's see. Uh, pretty much uh, like two streets off of the highway. Oh, that's right near where I live. I live in the. Uh, I live right on the Cross Island Parkway, in the uh, towers. Yeah. No, we used to. Have, we had one of those split houses. I can't say I've ever oh. been to Bayside. You're welcome to come over. You and Marjorie can come anytime. Yeah. Hold on a second. Here comes Kevin. Kevin's calling. There we go. Hello, Kevin. Yeah. 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 He's not. He's calling from out in out California way. Where are you again, SG? Uh, out yonder. 
You don't want to say like, anything she, about yourself. You're in the Bay Area, SG, right? I'm a libertarian. You're not. You're not supposed to know what I do or who I am. Oh my God. He's a Texan. <laughs> yeah. No. Nah, we're, we're we're on to you. <laughs> what do you mean we're on to him? I don't know where yeah, he's we, from. We know he's really a liberal, and. Uh, <laughs> no, he's a libertarian. Same thing. Yeah, it's like being a Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. Well, let me see here. I got a story here. Oh, my dad you want a used... copy of the Watchtower? <laughs> oh God. Anyway, um, you know what? I this is a piece of information that nobody probably cares about, but me. There, when Orson Welles, towards the end of his life, did direct another film, uh, but it was never finished. It was called The Other Side of the Wind. And it starred John Huston as a uh, director who comes back to the United States after living outside of the country for 20 years. Uh, and it, uh, he, he, got the, he, he filmed it. He filmed all the scenes for it. But then all of a sudden there was a big legal battle that went on, if I remember correctly. And uh, he lost the rights to the film. And the people who put up the money took the film and put it in storage in, I think, France. And uh, uh, the film was never to be heard from again, but it lived in legend. Well, about a year ago, a um, uh, uh, couple of people, uh, let me see here, where, 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 are, the, where are the names? Um, uh, hold on a second, let me put my glasses on. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> It, uh, I, what? Uh, who? Who's the guy? I'm trying to remember the guy's name. Uh, but anyway, he he worked on the picture, and then it kind of like uh, just wound up in the you know in in the uh, in the fire in, in the can in the in the uh, hidden away in some vault somewhere, and never to be seen again because the people who owned it didn't want to release it or didn't want to put it out or didn't want to. Well, one thing has led to another, and now they've managed to loosen the strings on Frank Marshall, that's the guy I'm looking at. He served as Wells' production manager during the initial shooting. And he managed to get the film out. Uh, I guess they paid for it, or maybe the people who paid for it died, and the heirs mm -hmm. just wanted a couple of bucks to you know, have it, or they needed the space in the vault, so here, take the films. I don't know what the story is there. But they have taken it, and they're re-editing it, I, I would imagine, to Orson Welles' notes and specifications. And a lot of it had been. He'd kind of done some preliminary editing on it. And mm -hmm. uh, the film is going to be released. Cool. And it's going to be released uh, uh, first at uh, uh, some film festival. I'm trying to remember which one it is here. I'm, I'm looking over this thing. Um, uh let me see. Uh, I've been completed. It'll premiere this weekend at the Venice Film Festival before being released in selected theaters and on Netflix wow. on November wow. 2nd. So this last film of, of uh, Orson Welles, and I for years have wanted to see it. It's half color, half black and white. The parts wow. that are the movie wow. that... Houston is making are in black and white and then when you go back to Houston and other people involved in making the movie it's in color and so is that the same John Houston that did China, it was a Chinatown yeah, that he did yeah he's also he was also yeah. a very famous director Phil yeah right he's Chinatown Angelica no Bob. famous director Phil oh. you know what he directed I thought he directed <laughs> Chinatown no he didn't that was Polanski was that Polanski it was Polanski well he he was in Chinatown then <laughs> yes, so he that. was in Chinatown. <laughs> I went to Chinatown. So was Polanski, as a matter of fact. Yeah, his nose got... Uh... No, that was <laughs> Jack Nicholson who got his nose cut. Yeah. Oh, it was? Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, by Polanski. Boy, you don't... anyway, okay. you don't know John Huston? Yeah. I... Angelica's father. Yeah, I know he's Angelica's father. I know he's been in a bunch of movies, and he's he's directed a bunch of movies. Yeah, what movies did he direct? Oh, yeah. Uh, geez, I thought it was Chinatown, but I guess oh, not. 
Well, I don't know. Would, there, well, why don't you try for for starters? How about the Maltese Falcon? Oh, okay. How about yeah. Treasure of the Sierra Madre? Oh, so he he worked with uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Bogart. Yes, and also his father, who won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor for that picture. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, Bogart was also in the Maltese Falcon, in case you don't remember. I, that's why I said. He, I guess he worked with Bogart. Oh, well. Yeah, Wayne. Hmm? Mm -hmm. well, so anyway, uh, this film is, uh, I'm so, uh, you know, really just jazzed that this is coming out. You know, because uh, I, for years, knew about it, and I'd seen some few little pieces of footage of it here and there over the years. Uh, and now all we need to do is have uh, Jerry Lewis's The Day the Clown Cried be released, <laughs> and my <laughs> life will be complete. Okay. Lady! Huh? Rive of Flavin. Well, you've heard, about the day, you've heard about The Day the Clown Cried. No. Oh, no, this give is, us the deal. This is a film Thank that Jerry you. Lewis did because he figured he wanted to do a serious movie. Mm -hmm. So he did this movie about a clown. Yeah. Who works in the concentration camps, leading the children into the gas chambers. Oh my God. And supposedly oh. it was so bad that he never released it. And yeah. supposedly there are also. Oh. Some people who have seen it, there's supposedly somebody, supposedly Patton Oswalt, I hear, has a <laughs> copy of it and invites it's in a dossier. Oh. It's, it's in a dossier. Uh, and, and, and invites friends over once a year to watch this thing. It is supposedly <laughs> one of the most horrible movies ever made. And I'm just well, dying also to see wanted it. To, he also wanted to sing because he was jealous of Dean Martin. He could never sing. Yeah, oh, he does on the uh, on the telethon. Didn't he sing a song to you, oh, Alex? Yeah, yeah. he sang no. he sang, it's horrible. He, he sang "You'll Never Walk Alone" to me. Dedicated it to me. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> thought he sang "You'll Never Walk Again." <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. Uh, talking about that, Patrick wrote me and said Rachel Maddow does have a nice ass. <laughs> <laughs> You know, between you and Patrick, this is <laughs> the only way you could look at newswomen is, you know, you look at the rack on that newswoman. Well, you know, but I'm an ass man. You're an ass man? Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're a lot an of ass. Men are. Huh? What'd you say, Allison? I said a lot of men are ass men. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Men. I'm not, I've never been yeah, an ass lot. man. I've never been an ass man. And I don't know. I, will somebody please tell me what anybody sees, even a black guy, okay, who supposedly they like big butts, right? But I'm oh, telling you, Kim, Kim Kardashian is like, you know, is, is big ass on steroids. I mean, what is that? She's lost weight. She's 116 and pounds now. And she is, looks pretty good from the, the front. But the ass is still the same size and the ass? same weight. Yeah. Have you not seen the porno? What? No, no, I didn't. I haven't seen the the uh, sex tape. I guess it's called, right? Yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah. No, no I hadn't seen. It. Well, you can't see, you can't see the sex tape because her butt is so big it it comes between the camera <laughs> and her. Well, do you have to tie a two by four to your ass so you'll fall in and drown. What? A two by four, a big piece of lumber. You tie it to your that's, ass so you don't fall That's one of the jokes the guys tell to other guys, right? That's, that's <laughs> yeah. one of the lines they use. Yeah, I never liked those. Yeah. I never liked thing. I never liked stuff that was disrespectful to women. Yeah. That's, well, that's hey, why we never liked you anyway. That's yeah. why I tried not to have sex with them because I respected them too much. Uh. You know, Alex is Alex is very respectful. He really is because we've gone out. So. Did we? What? Yes, we did. Really? You went out. Uh -oh. You took the first date with a place called Chelsea Place. Wow. Chelsea, was, was, wait a minute. Yeah. Was that the place that was a was a uh... antique store? Really? Antique I store. took you there yes. because I've talked about this place where you you walk, we walked in through an armoire to get to the restaurant, right? That's right, right. Exactly. Now, now, will everybody please believe me that this place existed? Wow. I just got sent a photo. Now I'm, you know, I'm. I feel terrible because I'm trying to remember you now. Oh, well, Allison, well, how much did he pay you to tell that story? <laughs> well, now let me I ask. I refresh your memory. I was, 
I was a, a virgin when I went out with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I had I had the most enormous chest do in New York. That's what they said. <laughs> Wait a minute. And you were a virgin when you went out with me. How about when you were finished going out with me? Were you still a virgin? You wouldn't. You're, yeah, because you wouldn't sleep with anybody because you told this story about how you when I was a virgin and got her pregnant. That's what you said anyway. No, I never got a, I never got a virgin pregnant. No. Oh, no? no? Okay. No. You were afraid of a virgin, though. Yeah. You wouldn't do a virgin. You said but, it. So did we have a nice dinner? I, I you know. Yeah, we had. A, we went out again. <laughs> oh, we did. Go, we got, went out more than once. That shows what a wonderful yes. person I am that I remember the women I go out with. <laughs> uh, I'm sure I would have remembered you. You just said big chest, and I can't even remember yeah. that. Yeah. Maybe I was too busy looking at the chest to get your name. That could have been. No, but, uh, yeah, you also did a, a, a tape for uh, Midnight Blue, which I was on. <laughs> really? Were you naked? Yeah. Really? No, I'm still a virgin? Like what? Wait a minute. What? Yes. What? <laughs> Wait a minute. You were naked? I'm still a virgin. You were naked in the, uh, in the tape? No, I wasn't naked. Oh. Because well, I wouldn't. Uh, I told what you I episode my of... So what did you do, was Alice? What, what, what was the nature? I danced. What? What? What was the what nature? Did say? What, were you, what was the nature of the it. tape? Well, it was, I was dancing, and uh, I lifted up my sweater, I remember. <laughs> Boy, I No, no, no. That. Do you remember what the, uh, what the uh, name of the uh, segment was well, on Midnight there was a There was a young lady before me that... Uh, Alex had gone out with, and she was playing with herself. I remember. And then there were, uh, yeah. That was most people that, that Alex go out with. Well, I don't, uh, I don't, they have to play with themselves. I, I don't remember. I can't. I can't imagine what you're talking about, Alice. And I mean, really, I don't remember the piece. But uh, oh, uh, I was. Yeah, I was on it. I signed the release. You said you are sure you want to sign it, and I said yes. Wow. Where did we shoot it? Do yeah. you remember where we shot it? In your apartment in the Courtney house. I feel like I'm talking about Donald Trump now. God, I feel I feel terrible. I just feel terrible. I should say, oh, yeah, Allison, yeah. you Allison with, the, with, the, with the huge rack. Sure, Allison, I remember you. But <laughs> Allison, don't feel bad. Alex and I hung out almost every day for two years, and he doesn't remember who I am. So, you know, <laughs> it's true. It's and true. then we went out with Jan. Do you remember Jan Adams? No. <laughs> <laughs> We went to Puglia in, in, on Mulberry Street. Puglia, yeah. It was in a big Italian restaurant that... Uh, yeah, we went there. You would go down there. I yeah, never... I, I'm not a drinker, but I would drink their wine because... You the got, wine. You got really drunk on that wine, and by the time you were finished with dinner, you were sober again. I could never figure it out. Uh, it was and, amazing. And, and they walked would, in there, everybody was screaming, and they didn't know why until you started drinking all that homemade wine. Oh, yeah, they start... So uh, the, le the level of uh, sound goes up. But also, um, they had a woman there who danced and sang and a guy who played the accordion mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Uh, Puglia's was great. It was great. Wait, I, what's the timeline here? Uh, the now, timeline? Uh, I would say... 1975. Boy, you remember. Uh. Wow. Mar the first day, March 31st. What? What, what was March 31st? Uh, the Chelsea? That was the first date, March 31st, 1975. <laughs> Look in your calendar, Alex. <laughs> March 31st, what year? 1975. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, well, you no. know, uh, you obviously know me because you know Chelsea Place and you remember Chelsea Place. And, uh, that was nice. We had lasagna. Yeah, uh, lasagna for tonight. I have this very this, this unbelievable memory, so I can remember everything. It, yeah, Wait, Allison, who paid? Alex, the big shot back then. He paid. Yes, he uh, was. In fact, they found out that the, all the ladies in the in that Puglia place they found out that Alex Bennett was there, and everybody was surrounding our table. <laughs> Ta -da. Yeah. See, I used to be a big shot. See, I mean, mm. come on, you know. Uh, I know the they cast. They were afraid he was going to dine and dash. So what? <laughs> what? What, are, what have you done since? I suppose you stopped being a virgin. Yeah, I'm yeah. not a virgin anymore. I'm sorry, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then I became a karaoke hostess. Holy cow! I I, I interned for Alan Combs for really? a little while. Really? I wanted to get into radio. 
Yeah. I was at your studio a couple of times. Yeah, I, I still want to get into radio. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you make it. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. That's but, incredible. So you so you, you interned for, for Alan Combs. Really nice guy. Yeah. Really nice. Wasn't guy. he a nice guy? Oh, I was, gee, I he was, died on my birthday, and I was I woke up, put the radio on, and that's what I heard. And I said, "Oh my God!" Now, did you get married? Very you, nice did, to did me. You get, did yeah. you get married? You have kids or anything like that? No, I never got married. Why? A lot of my because my well, one of my two fiancés died. One was murdered, and one died of a heart attack at thirty-seven. <laughs> and, You've just had yeah. lousy luck, haven't you? You're like the Black Widow. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I've had very bad luck. Well, the guy was yeah. murdered. How did that happen? He was managing a fast food restaurant, and they came in, and they fought them, and they killed him. Oh. And they, t- they were leaving with the money, and then they turned around and shot him once in the neck. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Boy. And, 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 was, and, and then you, yeah. you, you, uh, you had a, it was another boyfriend, or did you marry the guy who died, who had a heart attack? I didn't. I didn't marry anybody. No, I yeah, didn't marry. Yeah. So how did you find Alex again? I I looked at him all the time, trying to find out what he was up to. Wow. And I kept looking on the internet. Yeah, I was hoping to find him again. Yeah. Well, this yeah. is uh, this is this is amazing. You know, because I I know yeah. you're legitimate that you knew me because you're saying <laughs> things that only somebody who knew me would understand. What are you the doing, cat? SG? Nothing. Uh, do you have that hashtag Me Too available? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I paid for dinner. Come on, <laughs> give me a break. And I'm, what a sport! I, I'm sure that once I found out she was a virgin, I probably was very much the gentleman, wasn't I? Did he take you for the dried chickpeas at Max's Kansas City? <laughs> no, no, no they were before. free. <laughs> no, but, but no, but no, I. No, he was very generous, Alex. Yeah, it was a really? wonderful date. Yeah. See, Phil. Yeah. Hey, that's you know. That's she the didn't Jewish just thing. say a great date. She said wonderful date. Wow. He was. That's it's incredible. very generous. Yeah. First do you, st- do you still have the bracelet? And, and and might I say, with a woman <laughs> who I knew I wasn't going to be able to have sex with. Okay. That's right. And I well, and we not kind of had sex anyway. We had sex. What do you mean? It wasn't. What do you mean we kind of <laughs> had sex? We did stuff. I'm gonna get into it. You know, we did other things. Oh, I see. We did something. Uh-huh. We did. You know, you have I a stayed class. over. You know. <laughs> we were digital before there were computers. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. You can tell I know you because he is really hung. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> <laughs> I told you we should have. I left. thought he took the noose off his neck. <laughs> <laughs> Told you we should have left. I well, I hate to say this, but that seals it. She knows me. <laughs> I knew you. Mm. I used to I used to talk to you on the phone all the time. I used to talk to Bruce David all the time. Wow, well, you know Bruce died. Yeah, and I heard. I yeah. he was always kidding around with me on the phone. Boy, I'm just trying to figure if he knew you and I knew you. I, I'm trying. You know. It's, is this wrong of me, Kevin, that I can't remember? It's terrible. I was so offended when I first heard you didn't know who I was. And I said, Courtney House, but with all the cats, Charlie, you know. Oh, jeez almighty. She knows the name of the cats. See, by now Young you should Kim be saying, oh, now? yeah, I remember you. Now yeah, I remember to, you. That would be the best. By now you should television. be saying that. Yeah. Make it till you make it. That would be the they best. They wanted attention. They were so cute. They used to jump over the set when you're trying to watch it. You know, in front of the set. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really... Well, uh, 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 there was Shabbos. There was Charlie. There was Mouse. Mouse. Yeah. yeah. This reminds me of a film where Kathy Bates says, I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> was that apartment that she's talking about the same one on 14th Street has... that, I, that I went yes. to? Yeah. Probably. Probably. Okay. Oh, my Probably. God. That's the one where, uh, you know, who lived downstairs. Bernie Getz, Ber- yeah. Yeah, Bernie, Bernie Getz, right. Mm-hmm. What, what, SG? Yes, Bernie Getz lived downstairs, and when I moved out, he moved into my apartment. No, this woman's incredible. No, Allison, she's incredible. No, I mean, uh, I, I'm, uh, the only thing I'm going to find out next is at some point I married her. I don't know, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, 
I was your first wife. No, I couldn't be your first wife. You already yeah. were married when I went out with you. You still hadn't gotten a divorce from Ronnie, I think, when I was going oh, out really? with you. Oh, really? Really? You were going out with Naomi or Paige, like or Paige. I remember yes. Naomi. Yeah. Naomi I met Naomi. Me, yeah. She made me breakfast. What? She made you breakfast, yeah. yeah. How, whatever Ted, happened to her? Carol and Alice? I don't know. I, I, I would like to forget Naomi. She was Naomi. gorgeous. Huh? She, Naomi was gorgeous. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, it, the worst thing that ever happened to me in my life was Naomi. It was Why? Uh, just it was just uh, a a really I could tell you the whole story and it's a long long story but I mean she was a she was a nut job she was a real nut job uh-huh. uh, but she she also it was like one of these relationships that was just so toxic that, that oh. uh, you know because I first saw her um, we had I was at WPLJ and we'd done a concert I think with the Allman Brothers. And she was going out with one of the Allman brothers. I, th- I can't remember which one. It might have been Dwayne. It might have been Greg. Or it might have been just... Might have been both. <laughs> anyone in the group. And I was at a party, and I saw her across a crowded room. And I saw this woman, and as Phil was nice to say, she was gorgeous. She had, uh, She'd stop traffic. She'd that stop was, traffic. Yeah. She had everything going for her. And I yeah. thought to myself, I should go over and introduce myself, but... Nah, what would a woman like that want with a guy like me? Because she was one of those women that when you looked at her, you said, you've probably done it, Phil, and all of us have done it. She's out of my league, you know. Yeah. So I'm not even going to make the attempt, all right? So now it's a couple of days later. The phone rings. I pick it up, and it's a woman. And she says, Alex Bennett? I said, yeah. She says, this is Naomi. Uh, and I just want to say, I saw you the other night at the party for the Allman Brothers, and I really wanted to come over to you and introduce myself, but I, I was kind of afraid to, but I really like to go out with you. And then when she described who she was, like she was wearing this coat and so on and so forth, I went, it's that woman. You know, and that's how it started. And so... What was her last name? Uh, Page. Her name was Naomi R. Page. Uh, and if you look, if you look in a copy of the National Lampoon's Radio Dinner, if you have the one that opened up and was a double fold, uh, she is she and I are in the pictures together. Okay, but anyway, uh, so she said. So we made a, a, a date to go out to dinner, and uh, she, and she said. Uh, Okay, uh, we'll see at seven, 7 o'clock. And at 7 o'clock, there's a knock on my door, and in walks this woman, and she comes in with a guy. And I figure, oh, boy, am I going to get mugged or something here? What's this all about? And she says, this is my friend Bob, or whatever his name was. Uh, he just helped me with my luggage. I said, what's she doing, moving in? And she <laughs> said, she said uh, I, do you, you don't mind if I bring my luggage in because... Uh, uh, tomorrow morning, I have to leave for Boston. I'm moving to Boston. Now, you got to look at this from the romantic standpoint. <laughs> Here is a woman who has come to stay with you overnight, obviously. And everybody knows what happens on a stayover. And then in the morning, she's going to be gone, and I'm never going to have to see her again. Woohoo! Right? <laughs> so we have sex and we have a really wonderful night i mean it was just i remember it as a wonderful night and the next morning i take her down to the bus station and she gets on the bus and goes to boston never to come back into my life again until one day i get a call from her why don't you come on up to boston so i went up to boston hung out with her and then she called me and said i'm gonna move back to new york you mind if i stay with you well you know Uh uh-oh that whole story would be a great story if I said that I took her to the bus station and that's the last I ever saw of her. And I often wondered what happened to her because it was one of the most wonderful nights of my life. But she came back into my life and now I don't have a nice memory of that first night. You know, if it were just <laughs> left at that, it would be a wonderful story. But no, she came back and made my life a living hell. 
<laughs> what did she do? Just she was crazy. She was nuts. Oh, that, that she was wound up. She obvious. wound up at the at the mental hospital. I can't remember what's a big one. Uh, uh, here in New York. I don't know when. Huh? What Bellevue? Bellevue. Be- Bellevue. Bellevue. Yeah. yeah, she was at Bellevue. Bellevue. Yeah. She went to Bellevue. She went wacko. So she went to Bellevue. She was looking for doctors. You know, I, I didn't drive her crazy, by the way. You know, but I mean, it oh, was boy. just, it, it turned out to just be this horrid relationship that I'd really rather not remember and have a hard time remembering. But if it had ended with me taking her to the bus station, I'd be telling you this wonderful story about one of the best nights I ever had. You know? Fatal attraction. Yeah. So she knew, oh, yeah. you, so you knew not Naomi, or you knew of her. You knew which, who she you was. You love her. I didn't meet her, no. No. Yeah. Wow. Boy. This is something, Allison. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm well, trying and, memories. Yeah, but it, you know I don't know. I find I did I did a thing on Gabnet which was a story of my life and I did my life in great detail through 67 half hour episodes. And every now and then I'd have a hard time remembering certain things. And when they happened, what year they happened in, and so on. So, you know, what I find is there are certain parts of my life that kind of are a blank. And I think that <laughs> period of time was kind of somewhat of a blank for me. Um, because there were so many things going on. Now, how old were you at the time, Allison? I was uh, 20. 20, okay. And now you're how old? You're, can I ask <laughs> <laughs> well, all, well, all we have to do is say 1975 plus, you know. Well, uh, if if she's yeah. 20 then, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, in 75, she's probably what 64, 65, 63. Yeah. Wow. You see. So you were still yeah. robbing the cradle there, Bennett. <laughs> I, well, yeah, but I was. How old was I? I was maybe. I was. Uh, 30, 35. 35, yeah, yeah. 35. Yeah. Yeah. So that. that You're very tall, I remember. I'm not that tall. I'm only six feet shrunk. tall. Oh, I'm you shrinking. Shrunk? Yeah, no, yeah. I'm shrinking yeah. a little bit. Sh- you know. Every time I go to the doctor every year, it's like, uh, hey, but a little, about a quarter of an inch smaller than you were last year. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Eventually, eventually, if you live long enough, you disappear, you know. (laughs) Oh, gravity, yeah. Well, I mean, I, you know, at my age, which is 78 now, dear, um, uh, 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 I'm invisible, really. I mean, nobody notices me when I walk down the street. So are people with disabilities. I remember that when I broke my uh, leg and uh, I was on crutches, people look through you. People don't see you uh, if you're old, fat, or uh, disabled. Yeah. They, hey, they look by, right By the way, we've you. been joined by Jack Bishop, ladies and gentlemen. There he is. Yep. And I was old, hey, fat, hey. and disabled. Hello, Jack. How are you? Old, fat, Oh, black, now, now somebody else. Some, I'm crippled and crazy. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second, Allison. Did you uh, lose somebody? Yeah, Allison got lost there for oh. a second. Allison. Yeah, she's back. Off, yeah. yeah, got knocked I'm back. Off. Hearing you tell your story, Alex, r- reminded me of something. Mm-hmm. I had a standard rule. Anybody <laughs> that I met through a radio station or a radio station event, I ran away from. <laughs> well, then you're an asshole. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. You know, because, because really, uh, my feeling was... If it weren't for radio, I would have never gotten laid. Ah. <laughs> well, it, it it that never was an issue for me. But then again, they'd all heard those stories about black men. <laughs> you know, women but, would call the call screener and offer themselves up. Yes. Uh, I, I happen to know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, my first wife, and I didn't get married as a young guy, as you know, uh... She had no idea what I did for the first uh, month or so that we hung out together. And Donna, the lady that I'm married to now, she never even listened to me for the first year that we were married. And she still doesn't listen to you. 
Well, she tries not to. She says she hears us when you and I are shouting at, at Phil there. But uh, <laughs> I only do that because Phil and I are both heart patients, and I'm just trying to see which one of us is going to cause the other one to die first. <laughs> but uh, uh, I really had this uh, had this uh, this rule, and I probably missed out on being involved with some interesting and probably some very good women. But I never dated anybody I ever worked with. That was another rule. I never dated anybody who was in the business. Uh, I never, oh, I did um, date one person who was in the business. And I won't tell you who she is because if I, well, look, if I told you, if I, told, if I even intimated who she was, rules. you would know who she is. Uh, but... Uh, basically, I never, no, I, in fact, I, I kept, I uh, told people that I never dated anybody famous. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I, and, 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 no, no, it wasn't a smart move. It wasn't a, a move I made by design. It was just, I never, you know, the closest I came was Marilyn Chambers wanted to go out with me, and then she died before we could get together and have the date. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh. Yeah. There so was only you, one person I ever who was famous, who is famous, that I ever wanted to go out with. Yeah. And that was Wanda Sykes, and I found out she was playing for the other she, side. Oh, she, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll tell you who I did go out with on one date, and I became good friends with, L Linda Blair. Ah. Yeah, you, you had a crush on her. Uh, yeah, I, I said that I it was like my, my guilty pleasure, you know. That uh, uh, I found her hot, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so we kept joking about it, and joking about it, and finally, um, I think somebody would set it up, and she called me and said, "Alex, uh, I hear you're hot for me. Let's go out on a date together." So we made a big deal about going out on a date together, but we went out and we enjoyed each other. So, you know, um, really figuratively? No, just uh, literally uh, talking to each other and having the ongoing the only intercourse we had was discussion it was you know, inter by play on talking to each other but um but i always i to this day i mean i've had her on my show any number of times over the years even last time was a bit serious towards the end of my tenure there and uh i, I always liked her she's always fun you know uh, i thought she missed out on a lot in that I felt if she just started going on talk shows, she would be a good staple for some of those late night talk shows. Cause she, you know, she was fun. She had great stories to tell, but you know, she had a big thing. She wanted to just take care of animals. That was her whole deal. So. What one of the guys at one of the last stations I worked at in San Francisco before coming to America, um, <laughs> he was dating Carol Dota. Really? Yeah. And uh, was that 1914? <clears throat> so, matter of fact, it was 1916. <laughs> but uh, he was dating Carol Dutta. And Carol would come by the radio station. And, you know, I was about 20 years old. And like everybody else there, Carol would come by the station looking great. And uh, we'd all have our tongues dragging over her. And then one night, some of us made the mistake of going by the club and seeing her dance. And from then on, you know, the, the attitude was, eh, you know, you know, better with clothes on, better with clothes on. And everybody kind of lost interest uh, in her once we saw her in the buff, as it were. Hmm. Which just goes to show well, you about how album rock disc jockeys were back in the mid 60s. I did know I did get to know a couple of porno actresses in my time and I always made it a policy never to watch their movies because I didn't want I it, it, watching a person you know having sex in a movie is like if you a person you know was having sex and you walked in the room accidentally mm -hmm. and they were having sex you would avert your eyes yeah. and go, excuse me, I'll see. You You get this. It's the same effect if you see him in a film. You know, so I never, mm. I, I, I had a couple of women I knew who were just friends who were in mm -hmm. the adult film business. And I made it a point never to see them in the films. 
Yeah. Well, when you were doing Midnight Blue, didn't you run into a lot of uh, professional uh, actresses? Not, uh, not that, that made film. Not that many. Films? No, not that many. No. So was the you know because Midnight Blue uh, came out after after I moved from New York. Well, I had uh, a so, I had a relationship for on and off for a short time with with Annie Sprinkle. Uh, yeah. You know who she was, don't you, Allison? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. Didn't she pass away? Did I hear that? No, 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 no. She's still very much no, alive. No, she's alive. Yeah, very okay. much alive. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I, w I always liked her too. I thought she was one of the funniest people I I knew. Yeah. She was a great comedic actress, and then she went and started doing art pieces. I did her first art piece with her. We did a thing called the Tit Ballet, in which she put on opera gloves, <laughs> and then we put on the Blue Danube, and she would move her breast to the Blue Danube. And then she started <laughs> showing that in art galleries, and then finally in, at, at, at art showings. And it became very famous, that, that particular video. And uh, I told her at the time, I said, you know, this is art. And I introduced her to the fact that she was an artist. And from then on, she thought of herself as an artist. And to this Absolutely. day, she's considered one, one of the really fine uh, performance artists out there. Yeah. Yeah. And there, but for not meeting you, she would have just considered herself to be a porno actress. Probably could have well been, you know. So she's in The Happy Hooker. Who? Uh, Annie Sprinkle. Oh. In The Happy Hooker? Is she in that movie, The Happy Hooker? Yeah, the Happy Hooker portrait of a sexual something. It's 2008 film. Let me see if uh, was it Alex dated her. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, Xavier Hollander, Larry King. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, that was the movie. Candida that, Royale yeah. and Annie Sprinkle. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I love that name. Yeah, Annie Sprinkle. Her 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 her, she, her real name was very Jewish. So, uh, yeah, real. Yeah. But say, Allison, you know, uh, uh, you should really call us more often. You know, well, you, I hope to. Yeah. What ever happened to Scumpy? Scumpy. Oh, boy. There you Scumpy, I think. God, I don't know. I think Scumpy's dead, but I'm not sure. Oh, my S God. Scumpy was my producer, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't. I, if. God, I don't I knew know. Randall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Randall is dead. Ra uh, I know that. Yeah. Became transgender. And then uh, one time I accidentally said he rather than she, and he never talked to me again. Uh, uh, <laughs> and I went, look, I only know you as a guy. You know, I mean, the last time I saw you, you were a guy. I'm only talking to you on the phone. You were a guy. Right. And, and, and uh, but he got mad at me. You know that wasn't that wasn't right of me. I I wasn't respecting him. Or sometimes they want to be called they. Well, no, I don't think they want to be called they that much. That, that's kind of I, yeah. They, they they just want to be called. I don't she. think it is one they want either. No, they. it it is definitely not one of the things you want to call <laughs> them. Jeez, uh, but you know, uh, yeah. So, uh, but, but thanks for bringing back some memories. Now I just got to. You know, I, if I went out with you a couple of times, it's terrible of me not to remember you. you That's know. why I feel like, oh, my God. Uh, no. So uh, let me let me just go. Oh, you. Yes, I remember you. Yes. Right. See, Kevin, is that the way you do it? There you go. There yeah. you go. Yeah. I, Are you I, one I, of I Alex's Facebook friends? You'll probably be thinking friends? about it, and all kinds of other stuff will come Maybe. up after that. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Allison, are you one of Alex's Facebook friends? No, I don't have. No, I haven't been on Facebook with him. Uh, oh. Let's see. But I uh, could be. Do, do call you us. Can, you can check me out. My name is Allison Goodman. Okay. Allison huh? Goodman. Nice name. Yep. Hey, listen. Now uh, you're uh, all our friends. Would you call us again, please? <laughs> I sure will. Because yeah, you, you sure. can. I'm sure you can join in on the discussions here and give these guys hell. You know. Uh, uh, <laughs> thank you, Allison. Uh, thank you, SG. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, turned into a pretty interesting show tonight. If you all want to wave goodbye, I'm sure people at home would love to wave back at you. That's our citizens panel, folks, for tonight. Uh, and that's our program for tonight. Let me just uh, get rid of them so the next show can uh, 
do this all over again. That will be Jack Bishop with the intersection that's coming up next. And then uh, after that, uh, at one o'clock in the morning, is Connections. And then tomorrow night at 9.30, Damian Chapman will be here at followed at 10 o'clock by me. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye, everybody.